And our Sunrise Smart started a large fire at an apartment complex in Macedon. That's right. No injuries have been reported, but officials say 12 people are displaced. Ericetta Cost is live on scene and joins us now with the latest. Good morning, Ericetta. Good morning. Well, a quiet past few hours has taken a turn right now as crews are back on scene. We noticed some smoke about 20 minutes ago. A neighbor was out here and we noticed this side of the building smoking a little bit. So they called the fire department and crews are once again back on to secure that spot. We've been asked to move a little farther back. So this happened before midnight. Crews responding to this eight apartment complex in Macedon on West Street. We're right by Palmac Intermediate School. Again, 12 people displaced from this fire. And just around December, um, mid-December, a massive fire also displacing several people occurred on this same area right behind this apartment building. And crews say they are seeing some residents uh, here who are going through the same thing all over again. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of damage throughout the building, says Chief Chris Creamer of South Macedon Fire Department. He says crews tried their best to get most of people's belongings out overnight. The fire originated on the second floor and was coming out of windows, he says and a portion of the building is uh, still standing and no injuries to residents or firefighters. Um, and again, the chief says he's met some residents who are displaced today who were going through the same thing in that fire from December. I do know some of the victims that were in the first complex that in December that happened moved over to this complex and their nightmare came back alive all over again. Again, you're looking at an active scene with a fire crew back out to secure some smoke that we noticed smoldering on the corner of the building. They're taking care of that right now. Otherwise, before their arrival, it's been pretty quiet. Um, this happening just before midnight. Red Cross will be assisting all those displaced um, and as none of the rooms are livable. In Macedon, Erica Cost, News 8. Erica, thank you. And crews say a resident called in the fire. And several crews responding to this fire overnight, including towns of Egypt, Woolworth, South Macedon, and more. Well, happening today, the alleged attacker of Congressman and New York gubernatorial candidate Lee Zeldin is appearing in court today. 43-year-old David Yakubinis is charged with assaulting a member of Congress using a dangerous weapon, a charge that carries a maximum sentence of 10 years in prison. During a campaign event in Parrington, authorities say Yakubinis approached uh, Congressman Zeldin extending a keychain with two sharp points towards him and grabbed his arm, telling Zeldin several times, quote, you're done. In developing news this morning, one man has been arrested and charged after the Gates Chi Life School District went into lockout yesterday. 24-year-old Jonathan Jordan, a former student charged with making a terroristic threat, which is a Class D felony, he is accused of posting a statement online threatening to shoot up his former high school. And the man charged in the shooting death of Rochester police officer Tony Mazurkowitz has been indicted by a grand jury. 21-year-old Kelvin Vickers of Massachusetts appeared in court for a pre preliminary hearing, which was waived. District Attorney Sandra Durley explained the grand jury has been hearing evidence over the past few days and voted to indict Vickers. Vickers was initially charged with second-degree murder and second-degree attempted murder, among other charges stemming from the shooting on Bauman Street last Thursday. Another police officer and a 15-year-old were also wounded in the spray of gunfire that killed RPD officer Mazurkowitz. Those who live and work in the community where Rochester police officer Mazurkowitz lived are continuing to come together. They're creating ways to remember the 29-year veteran who was killed last Thursday. In Fairport, displayed in his honor are blue ribbons, many of the ribbons provided by a local florist. And a barber shop in Penfield will offer free haircuts to RPD officers and their families on Saturday. And leaders of some Rochester neighborhood groups sharing their frustrations about the growing violence, hoping to have a meeting with city council. Many at the table wondering out loud whether city leaders truly care about their plight. Some pointing to vacant houses and businesses being used as safe havens for criminals. Others wanting to know why more hasn't been done to prevent crime in areas known for violence. 
Well, after more than seven months, a new public defender from Monroe County has been named Robert Fogg, who has worked in Buffalo in the areas of criminal law, immigration, and personal injury, was selected to fill that role. Monroe County Legislature President Sabrina Lamar made that announcement yesterday, but the legislature still has to approve the appointment. Fogg speaking yesterday about bringing honor and diversity to the position. Let's get a check of our forecast with meteorologist Liam Healy. Liam, what's going on today? Well, we got a little bit of a preview happening here. We got some showers popping up off towards our west, and that's going to be something I think we see a lot more of over the next couple of hours here. So let's zoom in just north of 90 there over towards parts of Oakfield. You got Byron there going to be tapping into some of those showers probably over the next half hour here, 20 minutes. And that'll be something just to keep in mind. Like I said, mostly an isolated shower just for the drive forecast. Morning commute this morning. I don't think you're running into too many issues. But as we get towards about 11 noon, I think that's when we're going to see a lot of those storms begin to push in, but just as quickly as they show up, they're out of here. And by the evening commute, we should be dry. Highs should make a quick jump to the mid 80s, too, by the time we get towards about three or four. All right, Liam, thank you. Let's take a look at your commute right now at the roads. No accidents to report. 390, 490, 590 looking clear. Your commute into work this morning should be smooth sailing. Well, bad news, you didn't win the massive Mega Millions drawing. But some good news, no one did. And you still have another shot at an even bigger prize. The Mega Millions jackpot, or we should probably be calling it the Mega Billions, is still up for grabs, currently standing at $1.02 billion. If there is a winner and they choose the cash option, that's $602 million before taxes. Mega Millions has now gone 30 consecutive days without a jackpot winner. The biggest ever lottery payday was a 1.58 billion power doll jackpot won back in 2016. And looking for a job becomes a community affair at the city's Rock the Block event. The, the first event coming up this Saturday in Jones Square Park. More than 50 employers are participating, including Monroe County, Wegmans, Amazon, and the Rochester City School District, among, among many others. This event is a series of four and will be held monthly from July to October in each area of our city. Time now for the GRE Morning Business Report. The proposed bill to boost computer chip production in the U.S. passed by the Senate. The $280 billion measure includes federal grants and tax breaks for companies manufacturing the chips. The bill is still awaiting a House vote. Now, Meta, the parent company of Facebook and Instagram, recovering its first ever revenue decline in history. Profits of $6.69 billion, down 36% from the $10.39 billion posted last year. Meta's stock losing more than half of its value since the beginning of this year. And, if this and is the happening that nationally this week, two former police officers involved in George Floyd's death were sentenced. In February, Alexander King and Two Tao were found guilty by a federal jury of depriving Floyd of his constitutional rights. King held Floyd's back and Tao held, kept back bystanders, some of whom recorded video that led to worldwide protest. Tao was sentenced to three and a half years and King received a three-year sentence. Both King and Tao still face a state trial in October. And it has been confirmed that the Department of Justice's criminal investigation into the January 6th attack may be circling around former President Donald Trump. In his first return to Washington, D.C. since leaving office, Trump once again raising false claims about the 2020 election. Federal prosecutors are looking into communications between the former president and those who were close to him and his re-election campaign. Witnesses called before a federal grand jury include two former advisors to then Vice President Mike Pence. It is still unclear if Trump himself is a target of the investigation. President Biden has now tested negative for COVID-19. Biden made that announcement yesterday morning. The president first tested positive for COVID last Thursday and only faced mild symptoms. Biden was vaccinated and boosted twice. And heart-wrenching stories of gun violence were followed by tough questions as firearm manufacturers took the hot seat on Capitol Hill. Congressional lawmakers say major gun manufacturers made more than a billion dollars in revenue over the past decade from selling the types of military-style assault weapons used in many 
deadly mass shootings. Executives from Sturm, Ruger and Company and Daniel Defense condemned recent gun massacres but refused calls to take responsibility. Here's what some people might be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Production for the new season of Jeopardy is starting Monday, next Monday, raising the question. Who will be hosting the show? The show's executive producers saying current host Ken Jennings and Mayim Bialik will continue splitting duties. Jennings hosting from September until January, where Bialik will take over for an undetermined amount of time. And you know, you can watch Jeopardy right here on News 8. I know we have a lot of loyal viewers <laughs> because uh, of Jeopardy. <laughs> I am a loyal viewer of Jeopardy. I'm not a huge fan of the casting choices here. I still would have liked to see a few more of the other guest hosts get another shot at it. All right, all right. Strong well, we'll opinions. We'll have to tune in and see how they do. Yeah. Well, we have some pretty decent weather. We'll see how I do with the forecast today, too. Showers and storms, I think, from 11 to about noon today, and then we start to clear things out quickly by the afternoon. Should make it to the mid-80s, pretty comfortable. And then as you work our way into the weekend, low 80s for Saturday, upper 80s for Sunday, a touch of everything for everybody, both days with some sunshine there. Beautiful weekend in the books, it looks. All right, yeah. and thank you. Thanks so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next.